What's up? My name is Tech Number here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to a rather important video if you haven't done any research into the topic, but it's something you do relatively often. Screenshotting on Windows. As basic as it may seem, there's thousands of different ways to get this job accomplished, all with their positives and their negatives. Personally, I prefer having complete control over the screenshots I take, but we'll get there later on in this video. To start off, the absolute simplest way to take screenshots on Windows is by using the built-in snipping tool. Hit start and type in snipping and open up the snipping tool. There is of course also a keyboard shortcut for this, which is start shift S, quite a mouthful, and it should usually open up the snipping tool app. However, on Windows 11, it doesn't seem to be doing that. If I open up the snipping tool and head into the top left, then settings, inside of here we see the print screen shortcut. Use the print screen key to open the snipping tool and we can enable this in our settings app. Once you enable this, simply hit print screen on your keyboard and you'll be able to take a screenshot by drawing a square over any area on your screen. Super simple. There's a couple of options here and it is relatively basic. Of course, this will look a little bit different to the Windows 10 snipping tool. There should be a few more features here, but everything is pretty much the same. This is definitely the most basic way of taking a screenshot and it's available to absolutely everyone. But let's talk about something a bit more useful for people, and that is sharing screenshots online. While anyone can open up imager.com, drag and drop their image into the page here, and automatically have it on the internet, some people may not want to go through the extra steps of saving a screenshot, then uploading it, copying a link, and sharing that link to friends. Sometimes you want to just draw a box around something and immediately have a link copied to your clipboard. This is where third-party programs come in handy. Two popular tools that I've personally used are Gaiazo and Lightshot. Personally, I prefer Lightshot as it's just a bit more private and you have a bit more control of your screenshots. But for most free tools that you have access to, you take a screenshot and it gets sent to their servers immediately. Then you're able to share a link and it'll point to whatever their servers are hosting it on. This could be Imagem or their own personal hosting providers. For free programs that provide free hosting, you'll need to check the privacy policy to find out what's happening with your images. Personally, I used Gaiazo for a long time. They do have a paid package that allows you to support them and get a couple of other features. However, when it came to actually getting my images off of them, it was a huge hassle and you have to pay to get access to more than your 10 previous images if you'd like to see them in your own history list. Of course, with direct links, you can check out your images still, but if you're checking through your user profile, you can't see that far back. There are thousands of other tools, however. Lightshot is just something I prefer a bit more. You do have to click the upload button after drawing a screenshot, as you can see down here. But when that is done, you should have a link copied to your clipboard that you can do whatever you'd like with it. So personally for this, I'd recommend Lightshot. What about screenshotting your browser? Well, this is where things get even simpler. Both Lightshot and Gaiazum, as well as thousands of other plugins offer you the ability to draw out a box in your browser, either by right-clicking and choosing screenshot or by clicking the screenshotting app in your extensions bar in the top right. They all do pretty much the same thing. You draw a box around something and it either uploads the image or lets you save it first. Personally, once again, I'd recommend Lightshot, but for the absolute best experience, I'd recommend Nimbus Screenshot used by 2 million plus users. Essentially, you can pull down your hot bar, click the Nimbus button, choose to screenshot your desktop, or a visible part of the page. I'll need to head out of this page for that. There we go, google.com, I'll capture a selected area, let's say, draw a square here, and I can either edit it, or I can draw over it on their own editor here, and click done when I'm done with it, then I can choose to save the image onto my PC, or quick upload it, to get a link to their website that I can then share with other people. Most screenshotting extensions for Chrome, Firefox, etc. all do similar things. They usually let you edit them, otherwise they get uploaded straight to their servers or they get saved to your PC. Nimbus is the one that I've had the best experience with as it offers features like capturing while scrolling, capturing an entire web page so it'll auto scroll through it and take pictures along the way. Then it doesn't automatically upload it to a server so it's not automatically compressed and instead we can save a full copy image to our desktop. It works really well. On top of this, don't forget that there are built-in ways to screenshot your browser without any extensions. In Google Chrome, you can right-click a page and inspect or inspect element. Then you'll pull across this bar here. I use this usually for capturing really high quality screenshots of pages and pages in their entirety. With the inspect element open, I'll click the devices toggle up here and you'll see it scales down the website to look more like a mobile device. 
or of course it may match your screen. We can adjust the resolution by simply dragging these bars on the side, or we can type in our own resolution at the very top. I'll usually start with 1920, 1080, 2K, 4K, whatever it is. 1080p is a pretty good place to start, and I'll slowly expand the bottom part all the way down until I have the entire page visible in one shot. If you run out of space, you can simply click in the height up here and type in a specific number. So maybe 3000 pixels, 5000, etc. When you fit the entire screen in your page, simply click the three dots in the top right of the preview up here and then choose capture screenshot to screenshot everything inside of this block here. It then saves a rather large PNG file that we can zoom in very far on, and we have the entire web page saved in one big large screenshot. This is built in, it doesn't require any extensions, and it works really well in my opinion. Steps for Firefox are pretty much exactly the same, except this bars at the very bottom. But anyway, I usually crop it and make it the exact resolution that I'd want. That's a ton more nerdy, but it does result in much higher quality screenshots, especially if you push that number way higher past even your current screen's resolution. But taking this a step further, what is the absolute best screenshotting program that you could possibly use on your computer, both for privacy and for functionality? And that, in my opinion, is ShareX. In the description down below, you'll find a full setup guide for ShareX. I'm pretty sure I've done one of those. Otherwise, you'll find a ShareX playlist running through a couple of the different features. Essentially, you can press a keyboard shortcut on your keyboard. In my case, Control Shift C. I can draw a box around something and it'll screenshot it, saving it into here. Immediately, it's been copied onto my clipboard as the actual image itself. And if we so wish, we can pull up the ShareX window, right click any image and choose to upload it to whatever website we've previously defined. This could be any one of these destinations. We can have our own FTP upload to put it on our own website, Imager, Image Shack, Flickr, etc., etc. We can upload text, we can upload files, we can shorten URLs, and even share them on different websites with just a few clicks. This makes taking and sharing images really easy, and it gives you a ton of control over it as it's completely free, completely open source, and you have complete control of your image from start to finish. It's actually saved on your PC, I can open up the folder here and it's simply sorted into different dates. I've been using this program for a very long time and it's incredibly useful to have every single one of my screenshots stored locally on my computer, allowing me to back them up as I see fit. In fact, there's almost 6,000 screenshots here. It's a really useful tool. And on top of this, in the capture section, we have a whole bunch of options here, including text capture, which uses OCR to try and recognize characters in a screenshot and translate them into copyable and editable text. In the tools section, we have rulers, color pickers, image editors, not to mention one is already built in, QR code readers, decoders, and creators. Simply type in anything here and it'll create a QR code for you. Same with decode, we can screenshot any QR code on our screen and it'll decode it. There's hash checkers, video converters, video thumbnailers, and a ton of different things here. Not to mention, simply right-clicking and editing an image pulls up the built-in image editor with boxes, drawing, freehand, text, speech bubbles, emojis, everything you could possibly expect from a simple image editor. Upon saving, we can upload the image and do with it as we please. Personally, this is my absolute favorite screenshotting program, and I could not recommend it more to anyone. While it does take a little bit more setup than simply drawing a box over something and poof, you have a link to it stored on someone's website, it gives you a ton more control and a ton more control over your own privacy, which is definitely something that everyone should be focused on, at least somewhat. Remember, any free product that is too good to be true more than likely is. If something is free, then you, the user, are the product. Anyways, that's really about it for this relatively short video. Hopefully you found something useful from it. And if you use a different screenshotting tool for any one of these reasons or anything more, make sure to leave a comment down below so we can get some healthy discussion going. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.